In this video, we will show you how to replace your cooling fan shroud on this Chevy Trailblazer. This will be located right along the front of your engine compartment. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to mention is you need to have hand and eye protection at all times. We'll check the cooling system to make sure it's cool to the touch because we will have to drain the cooling system. Now when doing this, we'll make our way right over to the radiator cap, which is located along the front of the engine compartment. Press that down, turn it counterclockwise, and then lift it up and away from your face, just in case there's any pressure. Once you have that off of there, just give it a quick inspection, make sure the seal looks as though it's in good condition, and we can set this aside for now. The next thing you need to do is make your way safely underneath the vehicle. Along the bottom driver's side of the radiator is where you're going to find your lower radiator hose. We're going to separate this from the radiator. This is where all the cooling is going to come out of, so you want to make sure you have a collection bucket under the area. We'll squeeze the clamp, slide it up the hose a little bit, and then remove the hose from the radiator. We'll use a hose pick, carefully make our way around the hose here. We just want to separate it, but be very careful not to damage the hose itself. As you start removing the hose from the radiator, we're going to make sure that we try to control the amount of coolant making its way out. If you were to just pull it away really quick, fluid will come out of the hose forward and out of the radiator rearward. If we just pull it off just a little bit, we'll control that fluid down into our collection bucket. Once that's finished draining, we'll continue on to reinstalling the lower radiator hose. You want to make sure you press it as far as you can up against the radiator. Once you've done that, we'll continue on with the clamp. We want to make sure we slide that as close to the original position as possible, ensuring that we leave some hose on both sides of the clamp. Just confirm that we've got hose on both sides here. The clamp's in its original position and it's tight to the radiator. Let's make our way back up to the engine compartment. Now that we're back up in the engine compartment, let's start removing the upper radiator hose from the radiator. There shouldn't be very much coolant in this area, but you do want to pay attention to it. We don't want to spill any. We'll squeeze the clamp. Can leave that there. Got our tool in here. And be careful not to damage the hose. It's starting to come off. This is going to take a little bit of pressure because it's a fairly short hose. Just give that hose a quick inspection. That feels good. We'll set it aside. Now that we have that hose out of the way, let's look directly below it. That's where you're going to find your transmission cooler lines. We'll use a pry bar and just gently pull them away from the fan shroud. There we are. We'll make our way over towards the driver's side of the fan shroud. We're going to disconnect this electrical connector. You'll find that it has a gray locking tab. You can use a small pick for this. If you were to go right in the center, press down on that small bulged area, we can pull that away. We'll just give it a quick inspection. You do want to reuse this. Now in the center, right where that gray lock was, there is a squeeze tab. We'll press that in and separate this. Just give it a quick check for corrosion. We can set that aside. Now right next to that, we're going to find one of our 10 millimeter headed bolts that holds the fan shroud to the radiator. The other one's on the other side of the radiator. Let's remove this one while we're here. Quick inspection of the mounting hardware. We'll set it aside. Make our way over to the other side of the radiator. Now the next thing we'll need is a fan clutch removal tool. We're going to put this around the clutch of the fan, turn that counterclockwise to break it free. There we are. At this point, you can either use a rubber mallet or an air hammer. I have an air hammer, so I'm going to use that. Now
Now that we have that broken free, we can carefully turn this off. We want to be careful fully unscrewing this because it could potentially fall forward into the radiator and we don't want to damage the radiator in any way. Now we can take hold of the fan and the fan shroud at the same time and start lifting them up and out of here. As we start pulling it up, you'll find that it gets a little caught up on the passenger side of the radiator because we have that inlet tube. What we will have to do is gently push this towards the engine just enough that we can slide it by. Those transmission cooler lines down there might give us a little bit of a hassle, but that's okay. Let's get this to the bench. On the bench, we'll be looking along the back side here. In the area that had the electrical connector on the opposite side, you're going to find that you have two squeeze tabs. We want to squeeze those together and gently push this through the back side of the fan shroud. And there it is, friend. All right, let's give this area a quick inspection. We'll make sure nothing's damaged. Both of our locking clips are still intact. Now we can prepare to install our brand new fan shroud assembly. We'll take this and we'll bring it up. Put those two locking tabs through the square hole. There we are. I can see both of my locking tabs. We'll give this a tug. You want to make sure it is secured. We don't want this falling off. Now we can get back over to the vehicle. Now let's have a look down along the bottom of the radiator. You're going to find that you have two tabs that protrude out with a small hole through the center of each of them. One on each side of the radiator. That's where the fan shroud will sit into. Now that we pointed that out, let's continue on with the installation. Start bringing this in. As we slide it into position, we want to be extremely careful not to damage the radiator in any way. At this point, we'll stretch this past here. Continue on paying attention along the bottom. We had those two ears with the small holes in them. We want to make sure that the fan shroud is sitting in them. Now that I've got this pressed in, the bottom's lined up, we'll continue on to starting in each of our two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts that are holding this in place. Once they're both started, you can snug them up. Right there is bottomed out. Double check to make sure it's completely secure. Let's reattach our fan to the water pump. Line this up with the water pump. We're going to start turning this clockwise. Start it on. You always need to make sure you start this on by hand so you're sure you're not cross threading it. You will cause damage to either the fan clutch or possibly the water pump. All right, I have this bottomed out by hand. Now I'm going to give it a couple loving bonks with the air hammer. We don't want to over tighten it. We just want to make sure it won't break free while we're driving down the road. Over on the driver's side, we'll connect in this connector. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure that is secured together. Then we'll continue on with our gray lock. Should slide right in here. You want to have that center tab going underneath the locking tab on the connector itself. It's essentially holding it so it cannot press down. We'll just give that a squeeze, double check to make sure it doesn't fall off. Let's make our way back towards the passenger side of that fan shroud. We're going to make sure that we resecure the transmission lines into it. They should press right in. That one's tight. This one seems to be bent a little bit further towards the transmission, but it should slide right in there just underneath the other. Now it's time for the upper radiator hose. We'll take this and slide it right onto the radiator. Bottom it out as far as possible and put that clamp in its original position. Let's try and get this lined up. Now we'll just double check this, make sure we can see hose on both sides of the clamp, readjust it as needed. Let's continue on to filling the cooling system. At this point, if you had a funnel, you could try burping out the air that way. Otherwise, if you happen to have a tool that can produce vacuum, we're going to use that instead.
If you're using a tool that produces vacuum, you want to double check for leaks. The way we're going to do this is just let this sit for a minute or so and double check to make sure the needle does not drop. If it drops down to the 25 range here, that's not so bad. If it makes its way into the yellow or worse red, that means that you definitely have a leak in your cooling system and you don't want to continue adding. You need to find that leak. Okay, this has been holding for a while now. I can still see I have plenty of vacuum in my system because my hoses are crimped down a little bit. Let's go ahead and put in some brand new fluid. There we are. At this point, we'll remove the tool. Let's continue on by adding a funnel up along the top here. We'll put in a little bit more brand new coolant and we'll let it burp out in the system. Now the next thing I'm going to do is start up the vehicle. We'll let it run. As I do so, you'll find that the water pump will circulate the coolant in the system and push out any air to the top and draw coolant down and in. Now that we've run the vehicle for a while and it's up to normal operating temperature, and I'm sure there's no air coming out of the system, We'll continue on to removing the funnel from the area. I'm just going to carefully squeeze on the upper hose just enough that it applies a tiny bit of pressure. Now we can take this and we'll put it inside a collection receptacle so we can recycle it properly. Continue on to removing the rest of the adapter and reinstall our radiator cap. Okay, friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, what you want to do is just double check for leaks. After that, take your vehicle for a road test and make sure you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.